Allegiance, which is in the back of the room. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> After the pledge is approval of minutes for August 19, 2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention. Abstention. Motion passes. Four with one abstention. Under communications and correspondence, I have a few items I just wanted to share with you. Okay. I'm sorry? Accept the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. A motion to accept the agenda? So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, I do have a couple of items um, for communications, and they have to do with um, a couple of pieces of land in town. There is a gentleman that is adjacent to the town's property near our quarries, and what he would like to do because there's a narrow area where he could use a little bit wider space, and there's a narrow area where we could use a little wider space, he's interested in exploring the possibility of swapping land. So um, I and Rick Kelsey went out for a site walk, and I um, think there's some interest here, particularly because it's an area that goes around the rim of the quarry, and it would allow for a walk that you could get to the quarries from the parking areas. So I wanted to know if you had any interest in this, and certainly I can arrange another site walk if you want to take a look at it. Um, we have the maps in the office as well. So I don't expect any decision tonight, I just wanted to yeah. let you know that, and uh, contact me and I'll arrange for a date because there'll be, of course, um, if you want to proceed, there'll be legal things in terms of the deeds that we'll have to look at and determine. There has been surveys done of the land, um, but you really need to see it in order to then proceed. So. Is this the same property we discussed once before? It's, uh, no. Good. Sounds. Let me think about it. It's, um, it's I'll, I'll, I'll say it's hobby for hire. You know what that is, Mr. Yes, I do. Mr. Yeah, we Hall. talked about that. Yeah. Point. Okay. But we've gotten a little bit further. Okay. Now, the second piece is a family, the Field family, and they've approached the town and they're interested in donating some land that's adjacent to Riverside Marina and the town owned town owned land is next to Riverside Marina. And then a little further, I think that would be going north, more or less, is where their piece is. And they're interested in donating this to the town. One of the things they're interested in is having some type of a sign or some type of an informational kiosk. Talks a little bit about their family and how it came to be that they owned that land. I think it's contiguous to the um, Nolan Field. Howard may remember uh, a few years ago we looked into that area as a boat launch and there was going to be a walk but because there's so much wetland there it's very 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 difficult to get to um, but I, I uh, indicated to the family that we would be interested but I wanted to see if you <coughs> have any thoughts on that before I go any further um, well, it's Maple Avenue, which is a little street off of Airline Avenue. Yeah, That's one yeah, way of okay. getting to it. The other would be Riverside Marina, the Riverview Street. Avenue. Yep. Okay. If you go to the marina and then go to the right where there's a, uh, where all the boats are stored mm -hmm. and keep going essentially north, I guess you're really going west. Northwest. Okay. It'd be in that vicinity because the town owns contiguous to Riverside Marina. Okay. And then the next piece would be the donated. Yep, potentially. What, what's the acreage on it? Approximate? Do you um, have it? I'd have to look it up. Uh, it's it's sizable. It's challenged land because of the proximity to the water. Mm -hmm. 
and a good part of it is probably is wetland then. Okay. Yeah, it's worth looking at. But it it's conservation, it. and uh, I think it means that uh, the family would like to have a donation. Evidently, the um, the family used to own some kind of a business in Middletown, and they would bring their either their cattle or their horses over there. Mm -hmm. so it's an interesting story. Okay, so if you could contact me with your interest on that, that would be helpful. Public comment. Okay, monthly budget report. I did hand out to you. Um, there's nothing of any um, new significance, um, primarily because this would just be for July and August, but I wanted to at least briefly have take a look at the revenues in terms of the amount of revenue that we still expect would be 55.66 percent we still expect and in terms of property taxes current we expect to still receive 46 percent so in terms of current property taxes um, we've collected more than half property taxes prior years we still expect to receive 50 eight percent and property tax interest and liens um, that's still outstanding eighty percent a lot of our grants have not come in yet you can see that education cost sharing is not pilot uh, Pequot Mohegan grant those are not expected yet in terms of property rental that is from um, Brownstone Exploration and Discovery Park for the month of July we received one hundred and forty-one thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars and sixty cents. That's only July. That's only July. Wow. Because nice. August isn't due until the fifteenth of September. So they uh, their gate sales were nearly a million dollars. Sorry. Fifteen percent. Yeah. So you're right. right. Yeah. Wow. They indicated at the chamber this morning. Mm -hmm. Kathy and I were there. Mm -hmm. um, that they had their. Best July and August. So it's a nice hot summer so far. So um, they were pleased with that, as are we. Other revenues, um, see if there's anything else that stands out here. Nothing too terribly. As I said, it's it's just July and, and part of August. I don't know if every week in August has been other revenue, I believe that is dollars uh, on page two, would be dollars that we received from Kerma. Kerma gives us a revenue sharing when they have a good year, and we received approximately $17,000, um, which is good. It's, it's essentially profit sharing. Yeah. Hi, Carl. Uh, hi. We're just going over revenues on the uh, budget report. Under expenditures, I know there was one area as you take a look at the expenditures, some of the payrolls may indicate a deficit approaching in terms of part-time payroll versus regular payroll. And one of the reasons for that is we may have budgeted someone's position in the wrong column. They may be actually should have been in a full-time and yet they're in the part-time so to, taken together um, Tom is predicting more than adequate revenue more than adequate dollars for covering that expense but he said as we proceed you may see I think in the library we have a split position um, one position is half time here 17 and a half hours and part-time in the assessor's office so I think we put it in Part time, and it should have been in the full time because there was some confusion. For example, and I'll give you a minute to look if you have any other questions as you look. The um, police department. Um, yes. Force retirements. What are yes. there vacancies uh, yes. currently? Okay. So I'll update you on that. Uh, you were going to update. Huh? Yep, we have uh, two positions, as you know. That were the individuals retired. That's Dave Bond and um, Eric Grant. 
And we have hired a Paul Lissio, who is a certified police officer, just retired out of the city of Middletown. He's a Portland resident, and he has started. He started in August. And we do not have, as of yet, the second position filled, but we will be sending that person to the academy. So we have a opening in the academy promised to Portland starting in October. The individual will start at, toward the end of September. So <coughs> he is not a certified police officer. He tested the best of the list. Well, he's and already been chosen then. Yes. He, has, he hasn't completed everything. He has to have the chief's interview, which is next week. So hopefully by the end of next week, if all goes well, I'll have an announcement for you. And then uh, we anticipate another retirement. Officer Perenzino has indicated that he is going to retire at the beginning of November. And we have issued and have received back applications from certified officers um, because of the fact we have 11 officers, it's important to keep uh, a balance, we feel, in terms of the uh, experienced and those that are in training. So to answer your question, there may be some additional expenditures within the overtime to fill the shifts that are or have not been filled by those that retired. But again, I asked Tom that same question before tonight. He um, is actually away today, so he wasn't able to be here. And um, he indicates there's adequate dollars within the salary line item and the overtime line item because um, we are hiring officers at lower wages to start than the gentleman that left. So that helps. They also have a period when they get to. So yes. There's, there's also short, short period. I, uh, I uh, yes. Yeah. They're, they're, yes. Correct. Again, on the, on the CEO, um, is there uh, any update on that uh, search for well, as I told you in the spring, Middletown indicated they would be interested in sharing a position with us. Um, they went to their union and asked, and uh, most recently have indicated that their union is not interested in sharing with us. <laughs> so we will be searching. Um, another, another thought is within the planning and zoning bylaws, and I need to check this, I, I believe there's um, <coughs> possibility that members can um, be zoning enforcement officers. In some, in some towns they are, but I will check the bylaws because it is the enforcement of their regulations. We prefer to have someone that's, uh, say it's the Connecticut Association of Zoning Enforcement Officers, CASIO certified. Deanna is CASIO certified, so she is able to issue um, enforcement letters and perform the enforcement functions and sign all of the zoning permits. She's also a certified uh, planner. So she is American Association of Certified Planners as well. She passed that test. Any other questions at this point? Certainly, we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Give us a call. Call Tom or me directly. I'm happy to get you some answers. Um, the next item, I believe, is appointments to boards and commissions, vacancies, and expired terms. Are there any appointments tonight? We have none. I have none. OK. Thank you. The next is an update on a meeting that was held with Ty and Bond regarding the water and sewer facilities. As you'll recall, um, we indicated we would be meeting with one of the engineering firms that the MDC had um, indicated we could select among. And um, Carl was able to attend that meeting. And uh, maybe you'd like to highlight a little bit of what happened. Uh, well, we had a meeting. We sat down. Uh, I think it was a very fruitful meeting. Uh, we what we 
sat down to talk about was what the scope of the uh, of the study was going to be, uh, and it came up right away, like uh, because MDC is paying for the study, whose study is it? And it was brought up at that time that definitely this is Portland's study. This is a study that Portland's uh, that they're working for Portland and what we're going to be doing. Highlighting all the different assets, uh, 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 different things that we're going to be working on. Um, we talked about uh, infrastructure. Uh, talked about price. We talked about uh, all different things. They're, they're supposed to go out, and they're going to uh, do a synopsis of what the study is going to entail. And give us a uh, uh, a short. Uh, I will bring the scope. Which uh, I haven't yeah, received uh, yet. Haven't uh, yeah, so the scope of the uh, the scope of the study, and then now we're supposed to bring it to us, and then we'll look over the scope of the study, see all the different points, all the different assets, uh, 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 different uh, parts of the study that we want to look at, what we need to look at, and go from there. That's uh, pretty much it. We had uh, they were very very knowledgeable people. I thought um, I thought the staff reports that we had also the staff people we had there were very good or you know with Rick and um, and all the people from Titan Bond and I'm looking I'm looking forward to to looking at that study I think it's going to be a, a good thing for all of us. And we'll start with the scope. With Let's the see. scope of the study yes. When is that coming back again Carl? Well they were they were taught they were trying to get it done as, you know as soon as possible they were hopefully trying to work for for our next meeting which would have been tonight but I'm sure with the uh, vacations and all the different all right. people, and it's just just a wild week right now. So I, I hopefully by our next meeting, well, we we will have that scope and study, and uh, so all of us can take a look at it and tweak it and go from there. They also said, I think, Carl, that it would be a three to four month study <coughs> once they get started. Yes, the study itself would take that long. But we're just looking for the scope of the study right now. So hopefully by the next meeting, I'll have something to. Um, update on the long range capital improvement plan um, addressing infrastructure needs. I put this on the agenda for you to make comment um, as well as to let you know that we met, uh, all the administrators met this week, and those that weren't able to be there, like the fire marshal and the chief, um, will be sending information to me. What I want to do is put all of their documents and thoughts together, and I'll need to go to the Board of Education as well, um, and then bring them to you um, so, so that you will be able to begin to look at those way before budget time, because we need to really look at um, the kinds of things that need to be done. I had given you something from, I believe, the um, Public Works Department, first time this was on the agenda and we certainly know that the Route 17 project which um, we reviewed all of the building plans for the recreational park today I met with Ralph Zampano and Sean Dwyer and Carl Johnson and they look very good they wanted one last comment from us and then we will copies of those and I'm looking forward to having people on that steering committee that will provide the additional education now that all the plans have been finished as well as the financing and the impact of that financing and also the impact of the necessary maintenance for that project. So Ralph um, was going to ask members of the, his commission to come back with some names. We already have about seven or eight and um, it is a commission, if I'm not mistaken, of seven with two alternates. That'll be ahead, I think, quickly. That's part of our whole um, planning for um, necessary referendum next November 16th. No, and this body has to act on that, to place that on the ballot. Yes. That's what I'm correct. The, the question I would have had was some thinking about the study infrastructure study, which is, I think, a great idea, and then that comes back and, and we start discussing that, 
then we start looking at the recreational project, and somewhere in here there's going to have to be some priorities established, I would assume, and this body would have to, I think, do that, right? And I think we also look at the things that have been done and the things that may be in progress. Um, for example, we talked at the meeting this week on the um, IT and the computers, and you sure, you have invested uh, quite a bit in the recent past for computers and also the fiber project that we finished, which goes essentially among all the schools and town hall and company two, as well as the police department. So that's been completed. And we talked about this building, we did the roof, this building, quite a few of the vehicles have been purchased too within the last, I wanna say is it's five to six years, uh, fire trucks have been purchased most recently, this past year. And, um, the, the bonding, the, the, the bonding aspect. If we, we go to bonding for something, yes, we're going to have some hard facts or figures from bonding authority in terms of what yes. the town can afford. Of course, that's what we would have to do. Yes, yeah. and that should be partway through this process. I mean, the first, the, I think, um, Fred, the first step is certainly to take a look at what our administrators <coughs> say, as well as some of the studies that we are in the midst of conducting or that we have on the table. Um, Weston and Sampson will give us an updated figure for what they feel for the Route 17 Recreational Park based on the final final. And uh, tie-in bond will have some indication of the needs within water and sewer going forward. So those are, those are helpful to us of coming to you and then you deciding what additional information you're going to need before you then make a decision as to whether you go forward or you plan. Uh, remember this is all in keeping with the plan of conservation and development which should be brought to us um, soon. They're hoping to have that to you before the end of the year. Any questions? If not, we'll move on to number 11, refunds of excess payments. Brian? 271.36 to Toyota Lease Trust. Second. Seconded by Kathy. Two. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries. 42.21 to Karen F. Coughlin. Second. Seconded by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 213.99 to Honda Lease Trust. Second. Also seconded by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 75.35 to the estate of Joseph P. Keyser. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next is number 12, status reports. I have one um, quick report from Youth Services. They are applying along with the Parks and Recreation Department, the Library, and Brownstone Quorum for a $2,000 grant from the Community Foundation of Middlesex County. And what they're going to do is along the riverfront have what they call a story walk, <coughs> which would be places you stop and there would be stories told or information given, so it combines outdoor recreation, youth development, um, as well as reading and um, entertainment. So they're very happy to be collaborating and looking forward to hopefully a successful award that grants. So I wanted to let you know that. There's no motion needed, uh, but I did want to let you know. There's no match required. On follow-up items, um, I think we're, we're moving along in, in terms of what we talked about tonight in terms of the infrastructure project. I don't have anything additional um, for tonight. Any questions?
which would be under the formal discussion. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Seconded by Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. That was short and sweet. Huh? I had one announcement, but it uh, put out.